Moving on to the second round, we've got Nolf versus John Van Brill out of Rutgers. Little trivia for you guys. John Van Brill is actually one of only two people that has a win over Jason Nolf. The other, of course, being Isaiah Martinez. Van Brill's win came via injury default, but still. So let's see what we got here. Nolf's going to look for a dresser dump. Switches off to a single. And he's gonna kick the leg out. Gets the two. So let's take a look. So right here, Van Brill's changing his level here, maybe doing a, a fake shot. This is gonna give Nolf the opportunity to lock in this front headlock. So you have to always be careful against a guy like Nolf. You can't hang out on your knees too long. He's gonna he's gonna snatch up that front headlock position. And right here, Nolf's gonna hit this move a little bit later in this video. But you can see Nolf's reaching with his right hand for Van Brill's right knee, and he's actually gonna miss it. And so instead of hitting that dresser dump, he's gonna switch off to the single leg. One thing Nolf does so well, and is really important, is he builds up to his feet so effectively. So as soon as he's here, he's not gonna hang out on his knees too long. You can see it builds up to the left foot, then the right foot, and now he's up on both feet where it's a lot easier to finish a takedown. Nolf's going to, one thing he I see him do often is he lock, he likes to lock his hands right underneath the opponent's knee here. So you can see Nolf's right elbow is right underneath his opponent's knee. And he's gonna use that, he's, he essentially pulls up to get his opponent's other foot, uh, his opponent's right foot off the mat in this situation. And that's gonna make the sweep a lot easier. So as Nolf gets tall, he pulls up on that with his locked hands underneath the knee and that raises his opponent's right foot off the mat. And from there, Nolf can kick it out very easily, bring his opponent down to the mat, get the two. So once more, opponent does this fake. Nolf's gonna snatch up that front headlock, goes for the dresser dump, misses it, and then transitions to the single leg, builds the base. He's gonna elevate up, kick the leg out. One other little thing too. High level guys are really good about keeping the elevation. So Nolf has the leg here. What you don't want to do is let go of the leg as soon as the opponent hits the ground because guys, especially at the high levels, can scramble out really effectively. So you can see Nolf keeps that leg laced. The opponent's would be his left leg. Nolf's going to keep that in his armpit until he secures the hips here. Moving on. Nolf goes for the single leg, gets the feet quickly. Another sweep of the leg. Powerful takedown, let's see. One thing you see Nolf do a lot is grab over ties. So the opponent has a right arm collar tie. Nolf is really comfortable reaching over top of his opponent's collar tie, grabbing what's called the over tie with his left. And just before he shoots here, watch how Nolf brings his right hand to the opponent's collar tying arm, right at the elbow. And he's gonna use that, the right hand, to push his opponent's elbow past his head as he changes his level. So one thing, I, I know I mentioned this in prior videos, think about the opponent's lines of defense. A big, a big line of defense is the opponent's hands. So if you can clear the hands, which Nolf's doing here, you're in really good shape to start getting in on the legs. So he clears the elbow, left arm's gonna snake around, builds up quickly. So little details on, on this build up. You can see right here, Nolf doesn't even have his, he really doesn't even have his hands locked at this point. He's just gonna have his left arm snaked around and he's gonna build up just like that, up to the feet. And again, the quicker you can get to the feet, the easier the finish will be. Just like in the prior takedown, he's gonna sweep out the leg. This time he doesn't, doesn't do quite that same elevation. He's just gonna time it perfectly. So he, what you want to do is time it so when the opponent the opponent's going to be hopping around to maintain balance and as they're hopping up and the feet leaves leaves the ground the foot leaves the ground rather that's a really good time to kick the leg out if the leg has weight on it it's going to be tough to kick out but as the leg hops up he kicks it and then watch his right hand he's going to use it like a collar tie and use that to bring his opponent down so he kicks the leg out from underneath him and then he brings the opponent straight down to the mat with that right arm collar tie really powerful He's gonna maintain elevation with his left hand. And again, that's just gonna reduce the opponent's ability to scramble. 
I think he's actually gonna get two back points in that sequence there. So one more time. Really nice setup here to get past the hands. Right arm comes across, beats that elbow. He also gets elbow deep on his own shot. He's gonna get up to the feet. Really good timing. Kicks that leg out just as the opponent's hopping up. Collar tie, brings the opponent down, maintains the elevation, gets the two and then two more for the back exposure. This next sequence is gonna be really interesting. Let's take a look and then we'll slow it down. So Nolf hits an ankle pick off of an overhook, a little bit unorthodox. And we get into this dogfight position. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Opponent's gonna step over with the hook and Nolf's gonna roll and he's gonna end up on top. So let's go slower here. So first, this ankle pick is cool. You don't see it off of the overhook very often. As the opponent builds his base up from this front headlock position, Nolf's gonna grab the ankle, maintaining his overhook here, bring the opponent down. Doesn't get the takedown, but does bring his opponent to the mat. And here, we're in a position I called it a dog fight. That's the reason I call it that is because that's what this is known in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Fairly common position. The opponent, or rather, uh, Van Bril is gonna have this underhook is gonna grip the far, the, the waist of Jason Nolf so that he's on the far hip with his hand. And Nolf's gonna maintain the overhook. Both guys posted out in a hand to maintain height. And Van Bril's gonna step over and get this hook with his left leg. So you guys, some of you guys saw the video I just put out recently that talked about this. And the reason why this hook can be really effective is it's gonna, it's gonna get Van Bril's hips on top of Jason Nolf's. Usually the person with the higher hips is gonna have an advantage here. And this, the hook is gonna lock, it's gonna anchor him down. So he's gonna be, on, his hips are stacked on top here. But watch how Nolf rolls out of this here and ends up on top. So what, what, what's here an advantageous position for Van Bro with his hips on top becomes a disadvantageous position when Nolf rolls through because now it's reversed. Now Van Bro's hips are, are low and Nolf's are high on top. And so I think I think a, a, a key here is that Van Bril's gonna lose his hook mid-roll. So Nolf does a good job, he drives off of his feet and he gets his hips through. And so you see Van Bril's right hook that he has here, he loses it mid-roll and now he doesn't have any control of the hips and Nolf's hips are gonna settle on top. So what I'm wondering, and I don't know the, really the answer to this, if Van Bril were to lock a figure four here, so if he were to bring his right leg over top of his left foot. I'm wondering if he would have been able, would, would have been able to maintain control, maybe even get some back points if he was able to lock Nolf in here. Because Nolf, if I mean, look at this position right here. He, you know, if if he gets stuck there, that's going to be back points. I don't know the answer to that, but it's something interesting to think about. So let's run through that just one more time. So we have this cool ankle pick off the overhook, dogfight position. Van Bril's gonna step around, gets his hook in, but he's gonna lose the hook as Nolf rolls through. So nice counter by Nolf. Nolf rolls through, his hips are on top, and now he's maintaining that overhook here. This next sequence is gonna pick up right where we left off here. So Nolf is on top after rolling through, and he's gonna be in a good position to work for the pin here. So let's see what happens, and then we'll slow it down. So he's got his opponent's arm behind his back, He's maintaining that underhook here. Now he's controlling the hand. And he's looking to get his opponents back to the mat. And that's gonna be the end of the period. So opponent gets saved by the bell there. So let's take a look. So this is where they landed after that roll. The opponent's gonna to try to limp his arm out of there because if he can free his left arm, he can get his chest to the mat and then kind of work from there and try to get out of the bottom position rather than defending the pin. But Nolf, once he has his arm, he's not gonna give it up. So you can see he sneaks his left arm through, there's a little transfer there, left arm comes through, right arm finds the wrist, and now he's got his, arm, his opponent's arm pin behind his back here. Really bad position to be in. He's gonna switch back to the underhook here. So one thing to note here is that Nolf, when, he, when he's controlling that arm, his opponent's left arm, he's not gonna control it up, up by the shoulder. He's gonna control it uh, more at the elbow. So there's gonna be a lot better leverage there. The opponent's gonna be a lot weaker 
when you're controlling him at the elbow than if you were to try to turn him by controlling his shoulder. He's also grabbing the head with his left arm here. So you can see Nolf's right arm is positioned right by the elbow here. He's gonna walk the arm up. And now he switches up even higher on the lever here. He's gonna grab the hand with four fingers. But now he comes back to that elbow. And that's gonna be the end of the period. So I think the big takeaway here is the elbow control is so key. So the opponent can't get his, get his chest to the mat because his elbow is pinned behind his back here.